Hey guys, my name is Daniel. I'm part of the education staff here at the Challenger Learning Center. I'm back again with another exciting experiment um, for you guys. Today we're going to be building our own barometer. Okay, A barometer is a very important in, uh, instrument that uh, meteorologists use all the time to uh, make accurate weather forecasts. It's very important that they do all they can to make as accurate of a weather forecast as possible. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into all those and air pressure, which is measured by a barometer, is one of those very important factors. Um, air pressure, if you don't already know, is the force that's caused by the amount of air that's currently above us. Um, there's high pressure and low, low uh, pressure as well. Um, and that results in different weather patterns that we see all the time. Today we just had, well we had the, the uh, cold front move through last night and uh, today it's very, very um, sunny. It's cooler because the cold front moved through. Um, and we have high pressure. So high pressure in general results in sunnier skies, maybe milder weather if, you know, just depending on what time, of, uh, what time of the year it is, or even cooler weather like it is today. So a very um, nice breather from the hot weather that, that we've had, of course. Now on the other hand, low pressure uh, generally results in more stormy or, rain, or rainier weather. Um, you have more clouds, of course. So those are the big differences between low pressure and high pressure. But we need to make our instrument, our barometer, to measure that air pressure. Okay, so coming in, you can see what supplies we need to make our barometer. These should be very common things that you have around the house. Um, a pair of scissors, a jar. You can always use a tin or a metal can. I'd say a, a metal can might be better, um, you know, a stronger can um, to use. But a jar is actually the the best option here but again if you don't have one use a metal can um, you have a balloon here rubber band a toothpick a straw some tape and a pen or even a pencil would work as well we're gonna first take our jar okay this is going to be the main body of our barometer um, and we're going to cut the end off of our balloon to fit this on top of the opening of the jar to kind of seal it off and make a flat surface to then move on to our next step. Um, be very careful that you don't cut off too much of the balloon at once because you want it to have a snug fit, but yet, you know, if you cut too much off and it doesn't stretch across the hole of the jar, then you know, there's no putting it back, right? So um, I'm just gonna snip off, I think this would be about decent here, just the um, end of the balloon. Okay. And I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit just to help make this more flexible. Okay. I'm going to slide this over carefully, be very careful with this, on the jar. I've had the jar slip out from under me, so just beware of that. Okay. Now you see, come on a little closer, you see there's some kinks in here. You don't want that, okay? That means that the balloon is too loose. So I'm actually going to take this off, and I'm going to cut off a little bit more of the balloon to help it fit more of a, or have more of a snug fit. Uh, you do want a snug of a fit, and you also want when the balloon um, eventually gets in place, you want it to be as flat as possible on the top of the jar. Okay, so very, very important that you keep that in mind. So I'm carefully trying to snip this off. Of course, a balloon is kind of tricky at times to cut. I'm sure you know that. Okay, let's see how this works out. Just to recap, you want a snug fit, and then you want it to be as flat on top as possible. Hey, hey, look at this. What do you think, guys? That looks pretty good. What do you think? That's pretty snug. I know there's a little kink there, but that's from the top of the balloon. I don't think there's anything that we can do with that. I think that's about as tight and snug as you uh, want. I, I don't want to cut off too much, because then it might not fit on top of the jar. So. I'm just going to leave it like, like this. This, is, this looks pretty good. To hold it in place, we're going to use a, a rubber band. Just make sure it's a rubber band that's big enough to um, slide over the opening of the jar. And make sure that holds the balloon in place. That way it doesn't go flying up and you don't want it to hit you because that would not be good. It would not be fun either, right? Um, and just as, as, a, as a reminder, if you don't have a jar, a jar is recommended, but um, use a metal can of some sort. Um, the size of the jar or the can, whatever you have at home, doesn't really matter. Just make sure that the hole is not too big that a balloon cannot fit on, on top of the hole and 
um, cover the entire hole as well. You want something that's small enough that a balloon can fit, okay? But again, the size does, does not matter. Whatever you have at home. And make sure you use that, okay? There's our main body of our barometer. We're gonna set this one aside for just a bit. We're gonna work on the pointer of our barometer. This is going to help us measure what the air pressure is. I have a straw. Um, a longer straw typically is what's recommended. Uh, you don't want too short of a straw, but you want it to be long enough. You can kind of see how it's gonna hang off the edge like this. So um, make sure that you have a straight or a pretty um, a flat straw that doesn't have any kinks or bends in it and as long of a straw as you can. Um, the website that I even found this on uh, even recommended or suggested that if you wanted to put maybe two straws, one in the other to make it even longer, you can. Just make sure that it's flat, but I think one long straw should suffice here. I'm going to use a toothpick to make our pointer itself. Um, you can even make your own pointer out of maybe paper, like cardstock or something, and um, slide it in the end of the straw. Just make, you know, just use whatever you have at home. I thought that a toothpick would be um, a safer um, way of doing the uh, pointer here, and something that I'm sure a lot of people have at home. So, but again, whatever you have at home, make sure you use that. Ooh, I lost my toothpick. Pardon that. Okay, we're gonna put our toothpick inside the straw. Just slide it into the hole there. I found that an easy way of attaching it was to um, squeeze the end of the straw and then tape on top of the straw. Make sure that the pointer or the toothpick in our case does not slide out. It's very important that, that is sturdy in there. I might actually have to use another piece of tape maybe. You just want it to be as secure in there. I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna slide that over just a little bit. But again, you do not want this to slide out. You don't want this to be loose. I actually might put another piece of tape on here just, just for kicks. Okay. So you want that to be as snug as possible. Um, and again, whatever pointer material you have at home, use it. Uh, but you want a straight straw. You see how straight that is? And then you want the pointer to be sticking out of the straw. Um, and then we're going to attach this to the body of our barometer. I'm going to take another piece of tape here. Um, and you can either tape or glue the straw on top of the jar, okay? But, very important note, if you use glue, make sure it dries before you move on to actually using this. Um, and you want it to be dry and, you know, secure and in place before you can actually use the barometer. But I'm just going to use tape because it's a lot quicker. And come on in just a little bit, a little bit close. You can see what I'm doing here. Um, make sure that you put the end of the straw right here, about halfway on the balloon. Okay. And we're just going to tape this on like such. And just using two pieces of tape for now. Um, you can use more if you think it needs it. And that's why you want the balloon to be as flat as possible because it would kind of skew your results with the straw because it would kind of throw it up or down more. Um, so you want as flat as possible just as a reminder there. And if you want to look down, that looks pretty straight. What do you guys think? The straw looks pretty level and the points are sticking straight out. Always, you know, just some things to double check on your barometer just as a um, sanity check. Just to make sure everything looks good. This is your barometer. That's all there is, right? That's pretty simple. It's pretty easy, but yet a very powerful tool. So let's see how we're gonna use this. So um, on the wall over here, I have a piece of paper that's taped on the wall. Um, you can do whatever you want to use to record your data here. Um, it is recommended, an easy way is to um, just tape a piece of paper on the wall. It doesn't matter what kind of paper. I have some cardstock here just so it has more of a body to it. Um, and then we're going to put our barometer, I have a candle holder just to kind of raise it up if you want to put it on a stand or something, or if your wall, or if wherever you put it, if the wall is a, is a little lower, you don't need a stand, of course, um, just whatever and however method you want to do it at home, whatever you have, do it, okay? Um, one important note is when you line this up, I'm just pushing it toward the paper, you do not want the pointer to touch the paper, so you don't want that to skew your results either, okay? So come on a little closer, watch me label this. So you can see my barometer, of course, is 
um, lined up with some part of the paper and where the pointer is pointing currently. I'm going to draw a line to the right of there, about right in there, and that is the current reading. That looks about good. Um, and then I'm going to draw two other lines. I'm going to draw one line a little bit above it, like this, and a little line a little below it, like that. And I'm going to label the top line, let's see if I can get this done. I'm going to label it as high, and then the one below the current reading, low, okay? There's no knowing of exactly how high or how low this means, but we're going to see how this maybe changes over time, and that's what I want you guys to do. Use this and try your best to record um, how our air pressure changes over time. So. How this works is if it's high pressure, meaning that there's more air above us, okay, so that force would be more with more air above us, that means there's higher pressure, okay? If there's less air above us, then the force would be lower, and that's with the lower pressure. So watch what happens. Look at this. If there's high pressure, meaning that there's more air above us, right? That means that this would push down on the balloon. And look what the straw and the pointer's doing. Is it going up or down? It's going up, right? Because more air above it is pushing the balloon down, therefore moving the straw up. And that points to higher pressure is what we would expect. If there's less air pushing on top of the, uh, on the top of the balloon here, then that means lower pressure and the straw is expected to go down. I can't really demonstrate that, but um, you would expect something like that, like the straw would be going down like that. I'm just pushing down on the straw just a little bit. Um, but that's how the basics work here. Again, what I want you guys to do, let this sit, okay, over time, every day. Record um, if it's higher or lower versus the current position that it is right now. Um, and also, also record the weather conditions every day that's associated with this either high pressure, low pressure. Keep a log over time and see how the weather changes, see how the air pressure changes with that weather and how the weather is or what and what type of weather is associated with what type of air pressure. Keep a log and look back and see how if if in fact more sunny skies, more milder weather or even colder weather is associated with high pressure and if rainier conditions, more cloudy conditions, stormy conditions perhaps is with low pressure. See if that actually happens and it should, it should follow that general pattern. And I want you guys to actually do your own do your own research and find this out for yourselves. It's a very, very interesting project and one that you can easily do at home. It's very simple to make, very simple to watch. Just check it, you know, once a day or so. Keep and keep that keep that log. Keep us updated. De uh, definitely share with us what you guys find. I hope you guys learned a lot. Thanks for joining me today. I will catch you guys later. Hey guys, bonus footage here. Let's take a look at our current barometer status. Um, as a reminder, um, we did start, I'll use this pen kind of as my little pointer, uh, we did start at this middle line. Look how high it's gone because we are in fact in a high pressure um, right now, so therefore it's higher air pressure above us. And that pointer went up from that middle line all the way up to our line that we labeled as high. That's pretty cool, right? So I'm going to let this go and see how high our value and our pointer will end up going. Um, feel free, one thing I did not mention in our in the main video, is feel free to draw more lines, more tick marks. And you can even label and even number them, you know, like this is where, like, like line one is where we first started. Line two is where it is this day. Line three is where it is now. Feel free to add tick marks and lines. Like I said, log it out and feel free to share it with us. We would love to hear from you. Bye guys.